Today, we're going to compare Land of Empires up against Rise of Kingdoms in eight different categories. So that way you guys can learn a little bit more about this game, because honestly, it has some really cool things to offer. Now, before we jump into the list, I do have to say that there has been a massive update to Land of Empires, especially in the tutorial. The early game tutorial and events have been completely revamped and streamlined. That's the footage that you're going to be watching right now. And honestly, I think this is a huge improvement. And I just had to take a moment to point that out because the developers for land of empires are constantly trying to improve every single portion of this game. And even going back and remaking parts like the tutorial, just to give you guys the best experience possible. Now, of course, I do want to thank the developers of land of empires for sponsoring today's video. Once again, generous sponsors like land of empires help out the channel a ton. So if the game looks interesting to you at any point throughout this video, there is a link in the description below. Of course, the game is absolutely free and I encourage you guys if you enjoy rise of kingdoms to give the game a try now the first category I want to cover when comparing rise of kingdoms and land of empires is the story the graphics and the music I know that these are war games and that the gameplay is king and I absolutely agree with you but when it comes to immersion and world building it's really important to have good graphics a compelling story and nice music and sound effects so that way players are actually drawn into the game war games like these are built on their community and the more people that find the game appealing the bigger that community is going to be and the better for the longevity of the game and honestly rise of kingdoms doesn't really have a story i'm going to be just completely straight up there's a little bit of a tutorial they introduce like the barbarians and there is some lore and backstory with like the lost kingdom and all that sort of stuff but there's really no story however in land of empires there is a story and you're going to learn this story as the game progresses as you level up your city you'll actually find in the hawk watch building you can go down to the world scroll and as you're progressing through the hawk quests you're going to unlock different chapters here so there's chapter one two and three of the dark ages and you can also see down here that there are different ages that you're going to be progressing through and so this tells you a story as you're going through land of empires not only through the tutorial but through this as well and i think that that is really cool it does help the players connect with the world that they're interacting with now on top of that the graphics in this game are just they're just better than rise of kingdoms straight up they're just better all of the heroes in this game are completely 3d modeled and we're going to talk a lot more about heroes and troops and all that stuff but dude this is this is el cid in the game you're going to unlock him right at the very beginning of the game he's more of what we would consider an epic in rise of kingdoms but i mean these 3d models are just absolutely incredible and all of them are animated and they have voice acting and it's just everything just looks super super good uh, i'm just going to point out a few more of these models just looking incredible this is julius caesar right and so you could see the level of detail here and the animations are just really top notch but beyond that the actual graphics of the game it's a little bit of a different art style than rise of kingdoms obviously it's the same sort of isometric camera angle that you would expect but if we leave the city we go out into the world you can see a bunch of you know different uh mobs that you can fight these are called invaders so in rise of kingdoms they're barbarians and really they all look the same right but different levels of invaders do look slightly different even in their portraits here you can see the difference in the weaker ones looking a little bit different these are all stompers um we could also come across hell watchers which are effectively forts in rise of kingdoms and we're going to cover all this stuff a little bit later but i mean just in general like the open world looks absolutely gorgeous there's birds flying around there's you know leaves and actual mountain ranges trees lakes it's just the game looks absolutely gorgeous uh and in this department you know this definitely is is superior to rise of kingdoms when it comes to music and sound effects for land of empires i'm gonna say that the music is probably just as good if not slightly better than rise of kingdoms the sound effects are exceptional in land of empires i would say probably equivalent to rise of kingdoms however i have noticed on uh, um, right now i'm using an emulator i'm using blue stacks there are some instances where some sound effects seem to be missing i don't know if that's just my build of the game if i have to like delete and re-download it but it seems like some things that should have sound effects don't have them the sound effects and music 
that are in the game are crispy top notch high definition uh but there's just a little bit of an opportunity there to fully flesh out all of the sound effects for everything okay let's take a look back at the heroes because i think this is something that a lot of you are going to be wondering this is cleopatra for example she looks absolutely incredible a lot of you guys noticed this in my thumbnail for my last land of empires video she just looks great she looks great but these are basically commanders in rise of kingdoms right that's what the heroes are in land of empires you'll notice that the heroes have four skills there are effectively three skills and then an awakening skill that's basically your expertise so there's fewer here than in rise of kingdoms which makes the heroes a little bit easier to understand but you'll also notice that each skill has two effects depending on which game mode that you're in and i kind of i like this because this gives the hero a little bit more depth depending on what exactly you're doing so solo effectively means in certain game modes where all you're using is your heroes a skill is going to have one effect however in the open fields if you have you know your big open field fights with your troops there um you're gonna have effects for those troops as well so just to give you an idea of the difference here this is what a solo fight looks like it's just the actual hero fighting the uh the pve content in like a, a dungeon for example and this is the open field troop fighting doing that same exact skill so you can see it does different things depending on you know which game mode that you're actually in in rise of kingdoms we don't have that it's uh the skill does the same thing whether you're in uh, pvp content pve content sunset canyon expedition no matter what the commander is going to do the same exact thing so here this is a way for them to i think balance the heroes a little bit better depending on the game mode so you can make you know one hero really good at one game mode uh and then in other areas maybe they're not so overpowered and i think that's a nice way to balance other than that there aren't any talents here there's no talent trees or anything like that there are different star levels as you can see here and there are different things that the hero is good at so for example valkyrie right here uh, gets 25.55 percent additional attack when they are defending right so if another plays player is hitting you and you have valkyrie defending you're going to gain bonus attack so in that way there is still specializations for different heroes but you don't have to go through a whole talent system and maximize and micro optimize oh should we have one extra percent here or one extra percent there no it's just they just gain a benefit depending on what they're doing and i think again that is really nice upgrading the star level of a particular hero does take shards of that hero as well as these badges but regardless once you get a certain star level you're going to either unlock an additional skill or you're going to get a certain buff in your rally for example that's what we see here for my if i got the next star on valkyrie now on top of that there is something really cool about heroes that in this game that rise of kingdoms does not have and that is skins you're actually going to see here that my valkyrie has a skin on right now normally she looks like this and so the difference between these two are, are staggering i mean it's absolutely incredible how different these look this isn't just a cheap you know cosmetic overhaul like no they completely redid the hero entirely with a new animation new skin new helmet new armor new everything and this is really cool not only because you can flex with this and it looks incredible but also you gain a small stat bonus here as well and there are different heroes that have different skins for example cleopatra has an insane looking this is like a it looks like a halloween skin um i don't know if that's actually what this is but that's she looks like a zombie to me and it just it looks absolutely incredible some of the different skins here and i think this is definitely uh where this this game shines is the customization for sure it's also worth noting that when you're attacking something whether you're fighting something in the open fields like the invaders or if you're in like a dungeon you are pretty much always going to be using three different heroes right so that's a little different than in rise of kingdoms you have two commanders and you pick a troop type here you have three different heroes and to further make things more unique you actually can only have one hero of each troop type and we're going to get into troop types later it's pretty similar to how it is in rise of kingdoms so for example here i can't put 
three cavalry heroes you can only have one cavalry hero one infantry hero and one archer hero and the reason that that's the case is because how war is waged in this game and actually how the troops are laid out on the battlefield so in rise of kingdoms the troops all function the same at least at the time of recording this where whether using cavalry infantry or archers they all fight the same way here it's different the archers are actually in the back row the infantry are in the front row the cavalry charge in that's how actual war is waged and that's why you can't just have a full army of cavalry because that just doesn't actually make sense from a historical perspective you're always going to have different troop types in an effective war and that's kind of what land of empires is trying to replicate here and i think that's very cool next let's talk about the different buildings and the level scaling here in land of empires you're going to notice that your city hall can go all the way up to level 30. so it's a little bit of a a higher ceiling but i think the time to get there is pretty much the same i don't think that there's a drastic difference between this and rise of kingdoms just because the number is bigger doesn't mean that it's harder to get there the gap between each level could just be a little bit smaller for example i'm level city hall 25 and it, it's really not that difficult to get to city hall 25. now of course i'm not up to 30 yet so i just don't know what that what 25 to 30 looks like but again getting to 25 was so fast that i think it's pr i would say it's pretty equivalent to rise of kingdoms if not better now we can't talk about building if we don't talk about research or technology which you can see up here and just like rise of kingdoms there is technology except it's broken down into three different branches so you have of course the war branch the development branch and the economy branch the economy branch is pretty self-explanatory this is how you're going to get all of your different resources development is going to reduce the cost of developing obviously your army and your city so reducing healing cost reducing uh research time building time that's really important stuff there and then war is just straight up stats and capacity for your army so very similar to rise of kingdoms here except essentially all they did was take the economic research in rise of kingdoms and break it into economic and development i think that's cool they're pretty similar at the end of the day now one of the buildings in land of empires that does not exist in rise of kingdoms that i wish rise of kingdoms actually had because this is really cool it's called the safe house and you'll see that over here i'm selecting it right now the safe house is effectively a storehouse for your troops so the storehouse exists here it's called warehouse in rise of kingdoms it's basically the amount of resources that are safe from getting zeroed so if you get zeroed in rise of kingdoms you'll still have a small amount of resources because they were protected by your storehouse in land of empires you have that here with the warehouse we're going to talk about diamond depositing in a second because that's really cool as well but you also have a safe house and this safe house essentially what this is is you can deposit a certain amount of troops in your safe house and these troops cannot be killed if your city is zeroed it's really cool it's a really nice way for you to like i said not get zeroed you can deposit them for a certain amount of time so if you're in the middle of a war and you're worried that you might get hit you can deposit your troops in the safe house even if you don't have a peace shield and then of course you can recall them as well and there's a little bit of a cooldown so it's not like you can just hit a player and then safe house your troops and it would do all that sort of stuff right so it's a great concept i love this this is great for people like free to play players where getting zeroed is super detrimental let's talk about the hall of valor this is a building in your city which is basically the hall of heroes in rise of kingdoms if you don't know what that is essentially in rise of kingdoms when you have some troops die in kvk they go to the hall of heroes and in rise of kingdoms 50 percent of your troops that go to the hall of heroes actually get brought back to life after the kvk is over so you only take about 50 percent of dead troops in land of empires it's actually a 70 30 split the only downside of that is that it's a building that takes up space in your city so essentially 70 percent of your dead troops go to the hall of valor and you can recruit them back depending on how much loyalty points you get and you get loyalty points by filling up your own hospital so in other words by either getting attacked or by actually fighting now there is a cap to this unfortunately the cap is four times your hospital cap 
however once you actually recruit some of these which you can do at pretty much any time you don't have to wait till the end of a kvk for example um then that frees up more space in the hall of valor so i like this system a lot i think this is really cool and it's a way for you to get troops back pretty quickly after getting zeroed quote unquote and it makes that process a little bit less painful a lot of the other buildings here are pretty much the same as rise of kingdoms very similar in uh in function now you also have your cavalry barracks your infantry barracks and your archer barracks and i think that is a good segue into discussing building your armies and the different tiers of units as well as dragons because that is the other building here that is completely different than rise of kingdom so let's talk about your actual army composition right because as i said before it's very similar to rise of kingdoms in that there are three different troop types okay rise of kingdoms there are technically four you have siege as well here we don't have that but it's also worth noting that your troops are 3d rendered as well they look absolutely incredible your troops look so freaking sick dude they look so good with their flowing cape the golden sword oh my god boys <laughs> it's just ridiculous how good these these models are it's so good there's 10 tiers of troops so in rise of kingdoms you have tier 5 units in a lot of empires it goes all the way up to tier 10 units and i have to say getting all the way up to tier 8 which is where i am right now is probably about as easy as getting to tier 4 in rise of kingdoms if not easier right like i said if not easier same thing with the buildings getting to 25 very straightforward not as grindy it's great beyond that there are also relics in this game as well there were actually relics in land of empires before well before rise of kingdoms announced that they were going to implement relics and that's not very surprising i think a lot of games have systems that are similar to this however this is a little different than rise of kingdoms in land of empires relics there's only three and they're per troop type so in rise of kingdoms the relics are per formation and you can have up to four of them there's more relics in rise of kingdoms especially because there's like six or seven formations whereas here there's only three sets of relics and there's only three per set these give you just a flat out amount of stats and you can enhance them to increase their level over time this is all done in the treasury which is a building here that's going to be probably similar to this to the equivalent building in rise of kingdoms at the time of recording this technically uh this the relic system is not really in rise of kingdoms yet even though we do know pretty much how it is and how it's going to work as far as actually obtaining the heroes that you see here in order to build your army it's done in pretty much the same ways as rise of kingdoms you're going to be able to recruit them through a summoning method so you have the advanced recruits this is basically like the silver keys in rise of kingdoms and then you also have the epic recruits and this is essentially the gold keys in rise of kingdoms and you can do either times one or times five there's no real difference doing it either way and boom you get different shards of the actual heroes and if you collect uh, enough of them you're able to summon them and level up their stars and skills and things of that nature of course there are events similar to the mightiest governor event and the wheel of fortune as well ring of happiness okay and so this is another way that you're going to be able to get your hand on uh new heroes so here kellerman uh, he appears to be the newest hero in the game when i first downloaded land of empires he was not in the game but oh my god he looks absolutely insane i mean look, dude it's it's just it's unreal it's unreal some of the artwork in this game it's it looks so good so yeah pretty much nothing different in the uh acquisition department there but there is a different way of getting formations now this is another thing that land of empires has had since pretty much day one that rise of kingdoms is just now starting to implement and that is formations now formations are also found in the hall of valor which we talked about before this is where you recruit back your dead troops but you can do some trainings here in different formations so here you can see you can have your infantry train your cavalry can train or your archers can train and then they can study four different formations that you have access to so by default you're in square formation but you also can be in wedge formation or echelon or hollow square so again these are formations that this game has had way before rise of kingdoms announced that they were doing it 
I almost feel like Rise of Kingdoms pretty much just copied Land of, Land of Empires here. The names are literally the same. I mean, of course, it is based on history, so that, that makes sense there. Um, however, in Land of Empires, it's a little bit different uh, because you do actually get different bonuses depending on the troop type and the formation. Uh, but if we take a look here, like the wedge formation gives you a bunch of extra stats, and then you have sort of legendary formations, which is echelon and hollow square. And these give you way more stats. You can see over here, basic HP and ferocity. I think this UI is a little bit broken because I forced the game into a little bit of a weird resolution that it's not used to. When I play this game in landscape mode, I don't see any of these little uh, display glitches, but because I have my banner up here, it actually messes that up a little bit. So regardless, if you're able to get your hands on echelon or hollow square, these are going to give you a ton of extra stats. So that's, you know, pretty obviously an advantage to just straight up using those formations over the others. Whereas in rise of kingdoms, formations are very small buffs to your army here they're a little bit uh, of a bigger buff now we also have to talk about titanios or the dragons in the game okay this is obviously a feature that rise of kingdoms does not have whatsoever so everybody gets bloodshade at the beginning of the game i'm not going to go through these too heavily because i actually have an entire video about them go ahead and check that out on the channel but these have different skills that you unlock as you enhance them and level them up. So each Titanio has three different skills that you unlock at different levels, and they have pretty big impacts, some of which are passive, like healing speed and hospital capacity, others which are AOE damage in actual war. So there's a lot that you can do here. You also can customize these. So just like there are different skins for your heroes in the game, there are different skins for the Titanios, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, dude, this looks so good. It looks so good. And this is, I, I guys, I can't, I can't express enough how incredible it is that they've gone through and added, um, different skins to these Titan. Like, oh my God, dude, look at this, man. Look at this. And I, I know some of these are just different paint jobs. Others are actually different models and, and different components. You can change literally just one piece of the Titanio if you want to. Um, and they've also added uh, not just, you know, Night Saber, which was the newest recently, but beyond that, they've also added a big old monkey, big old monkey over here. So they're constantly adding new Titanios to the game. Uh, and that is definitely a really cool feature, not just cosmetically, but in war. And it's something that Rise of Kingdoms just doesn't even have. Now, let's talk about the last thing when it comes to building your armies. Ooh, look, we can, we can do a little summit over here. Look at my boy. Uh, the last thing we have to talk about with building our armies is equipment, okay? So the equipment system here is much more simple than in Rise of Kingdoms because there's only six pieces as opposed to eight in Rise of Kingdoms. And uh, these are just smaller, generally smaller stat buffs than in Rise of Kingdoms kingdoms so in some ways it, building your army in light of empires is you know there's a little bit more uh, more components to it right you have your titanios and dragons you have you know the big formation buffs that you can obtain you have more heroes per army things like that um, but then there's other things that are a little bit more simple right we don't have a whole talent system you have to go through there isn't you know a bunch of extra equipment that you have to go through here right um there's fewer relics for your troop types than there are formations of rise of kingdom so it's a little bit more complex in some ways and a little bit more simple in other ways but no matter how you look at it there's also really cool customization and uh, you no know, fresh coats of paint you can put on things, which I think is really cool. Now, when we talk about different events, this is really important for the health of a game like this. Um, this is one of the reasons why games, in my opinion, uh, that I've played in the past have died pretty quickly. Uh, other games in the same genre have died pretty quickly because they just lacked content. They just lacked content however that is not the case here for land of empires like i said before you're gonna find a lot of events that are similar to rise of kingdoms like we have here the ancient army and you know you can summon these different uh, armies and fight them as well um there is also the a kvk game mode we've already discussed this on the channel go ahead and check out uh, my previous video where we actually uh destroyed and burned a couple of different player cities in the game which was a lot of fun for sure there is also the road of heroes which is essentially an expedition mode that you can claim rewards from every single day there's also a hard mode down here which is actually really really cool i wish rise of kingdoms did something like that as well it's a way for players to get more content out of existing content just 
turning up the difficulty dial there and i think that is really awesome of course there's a shop here for the road of heroes expedition as well we can come back into campaign and you can see that there are um things like sunset canyon which is really nice and of course there are holiday events as well so this is the halloween event they also had a really cool summer event and a bunch of other things in between so there are limited edition skins that you can get here which i think is really cool here we're throwing pumpkins at a uh some sort of a zombie spider which i think is it's as just it's creative it's cool i like it you can get crit you can get free stuff here of course there are bonus tiered rewards and the themes are super cool look at that that's so creepy it's incredible because everything in the game has 3d models it, they can just really add a lot more detail to these assets that you just don't get in rise of kingdoms and it just it looks so good now, if you are a low spender here in land of empires you're going to get a ton of value from this event here so this is a five dollar tier of rewards and then over here is a 15 dollar tier of rewards and everything that you get here is actually insane on top of the fact that you only have to go through 21 levels as opposed to rise of kingdoms which requires i think 25 for their events and any progress that you make beyond that is going to get you a ton of speed ups resources and mobility potions which if you've played rise of kingdoms that's basically ap so there's a ton of bonus value here but on top of that they have their own version of the recharge rewards that is built into the holiday event so if you actually buy diamonds or spend diamonds over here you're gonna get a ton of extra value as well so overall the value you get in these holiday events in the land of empires is insane like we mentioned earlier in the video there is also daily quests but there are hawk watch quests as well so there's so much content to be done here in land of empires and that's not even talking about joining an alliance and all the different alliance events that you can do there as well i also would like to say that there is a hell watcher search function guys these are basically forts okay so if you play rise of kingdoms and you want them to add a fort search function it already exists in land of empires because they've realized that that is just a no-brainer feature the fact that rise of kingdoms doesn't add a fort search feature when so many competing games already have that feature is purely idiotic there is no reason why this feature shouldn't be in rise of kingdoms and yet it's not and it is here in land of empires because it's just common sense guys next let's talk about open field fighting and if you've played infinity kingdom then you're going to see that this is a very similar system where you can attack something in the open field you send out your army you see it marching here and then it fights and you can spectate that actual fight here in uh in game so this is what's actually happening during the the war between me and those stompers um i'm not controlling anything here these are just auto fighting so just like in rise of kingdoms when you fight a barbarian you're not controlling that fight it's just automatically going same thing is happening here however unlike rise of kingdoms you can't just send your army out into the open field if i click and hold i can teleport here but you can't just deploy armies and just have them sitting around the map they actually have to go to an objective which is why i said it's similar to like infinity kingdom for example or lords mobile there are a lot of games that use this same sort of fighting rallying and defending style so if you played those games then you're definitely going to be familiar with it but it is different than rise of kingdoms a lot of people really love the simplicity of the fighting system of games like land of empires or infinity kingdom or lords mobile for example but i know a lot of people also like the open field fighting in rise of kingdoms because it's a little bit more flexible you can actually move your troops around the open field and feel like you have more control over what it is exactly that you're doing here you can see my army just goes right back to the city that's the same if you attack a player city for example so if you prefer that more classic simple and straightforward fighting style and waging war style then you're really gonna like land of empires next let's talk about which of these two games is more pay to win that is a topic on everybody's mind when it comes to free to play games this is not exclusive to city builders this is literally every free to play game out there people are asking is it 
pay to win so if we're talking about land of empires versus rise of kingdoms one thing that i think is important to mention is that these games have the same monetization strategy they both have vip systems they have monthly monthly rewards that you can buy they also have different packs that you can buy and they have daily offers and things like that so again this is all very similar and familiar if you've played rise of kingdoms now i will say that for the vip system here in land of empires there's only 12 vip levels right there's only 12 and you actually have to activate your vip so while you do get a bunch of bonus um stats for example for having a high vip level um a player who is a high vip level might not have it active all the time so whereas in rise of kingdoms if you rally a player that's max vip they're gonna have the benefits of that max vip because it's just constantly always there in this game if that player is caught off guard and they don't have their vip activated they're not going to get the benefit of that and i think that's really cool again there's also only 12 levels there's also city skins and these city skins do give you a bonus in rise of kingdoms there's the zenith of power and those skins are typically more powerful than any other skin in the game here in land of empires there are a nice chunk of skins but the benefits that you get from those skins aren't that big you get three percent troop attack that's pretty much the case for every single skin it's three percent attack that's it and even this skin which is uh, you know less rare than some of these more legendary looking skins which oh my god dude the, the skins look so good in this game dude the skins look so good okay i have to focus even the uh even the purple skin here gives you two percent attack so it's almost as good as as the legendary one right so there's really no uh there's no significant pay to win advantage from a city skin perspective however i will note that there is also marching skins now these just give you march speed slightly more however i think march speed is really important in this game okay so it's worth noting that there's other skins that you could focus on this is the halloween marching skin which dude it looks incredible the design of this game is top notch you also gain bonuses from your avatar plates but the one and a half percent troop defense that i get from this legendary is equivalent to the benefit i would get from an even more rare one so really there's no pay to win advantage here either now i mentioned this with the warehouse earlier but there is a way that you can actually gain more gems for free and that's by doing the value savings so essentially what this is is an interest on your gems so what you can do is take a certain amount of gems and lock it away for a certain amount of time and at the end of that time frame you can retrieve those gems with a certain amount of profit so for example i've locked up 6,600 gems for seven days. And at the end of that, not only do I get back my 6,600 gems, but I get 10% more on top of it. So this is really cool because in rise of kingdoms, if you want to get gems for free, you got to be online and you got to be marching around farming those nodes. And it's a hassle. It's a pain. It's annoying, dude. It's annoying here. You can get 50% free gems, free gems, but you have to lock them away for 30 days. So there's a downside, but it's going to happen passively without you having to do anything without having to, you know, go ahead and farm them on the open field. You can go ahead and farm the resources you actually need. And I love this. And the fact that you get diamonds for free here, that is actually huge. Now, again, on the, on the topic of pay to win, the fact that you have your, you know, your warehouse to protect your um, resources, but you also have the safe house to protect your units. If you get quote unquote zeroed, I think that that is inherently better for free to play the fact that you can protect your units uh in an, an additional way above and beyond the ways that you could do it in rise of kingdoms a again i think that that is better plus the fact that you can get up to 70 percent of your troops back if they do end up dying by exchanging your loyalty now for those of you that do like to spend a little bit in these city builder games the value that you can get in light of empires is actually insane because if you take a look here one dollar is equivalent to 500 diamonds in land of empires whereas in rise of kingdoms one dollar only gets you 200 gems and that value extends to all of the special packs in the game as well one dollar is 500 diamonds so you actually get way more for what you spend in land of empires than you would in a game like rise of kingdoms because you just 
just get more of the premium currency for the same amount of money and i think that that's pretty cool because land of empires is a smaller game than rise of kingdoms right rise of kingdoms has been out for a really long time so if you do happen to be a low spender in land of empires you're probably going to be able to actually perform really well in on your server because there's just less whales in the game right now so for some of you that might be something worth considering so all in all i do think that there are some advantages to land of empires over rise of kingdoms from a pay to win department but again i do want to emphasize that these games are in the same genre and they do have a lot of similarities and their monetization strategy is very very similar so keep that in mind if you like rise of kingdoms or you're looking for an alternative i think land of empires is absolutely still worth a try with that being said there's a link down below to download land of empires if you've made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully you'll at least give the game a try and drop a thumbs up down below to help me defeat the youtube algorithm like i said before there is a brand new early game experience and tutorial for new players so if you've tried the game in the past you might want to try it again just to see if you enjoy the new experience better comment down below your thoughts on land of empires have you played the game yet if not what are you waiting for i would love to hear your thoughts down below subscribe to the channel if you're new here and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch talk to you guys again soon peace